Why do you make movies for less than 50,000? I think most people that make movies for less than 50,000 are making it just like me because that's 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 what we have to work with, you know, or that's what we can raise. I mean, I would uh, I would feel much more comfortable like like as far as like production goes working around 200,000 or 300,000. You know, making a $50,000 movie is tough no matter how you cut it, no matter what the scale of it is. Trying to pay people fair rates and like it, it, it's it's next to impossible. So, I make $50,000 movies for one cuz that's like that's the ceiling of what well close to the ceiling of what I can raise myself or pay for myself. You know, anything beyond that it starts getting a little like hairier, you know. So, and then as far as returns, like to be perfectly honest, I like I wouldn't feel 100% comfortable right now taking $100,000 on a movie. I wouldn't be positive I could return that back. 50,000 for the right movie, I, I'm 80, 90% sure I can return that back or at least most of it. 100, I don't know. When you say the right movie, are we talking narrative? Are we talking documentary? I, I'm, it could be narrative or documentary. When I say right movie, I mean like, you know, the, a, a, genre, a, pop, a genre that's doing well in the market, um, a, you know, a, a, you know, a scale that, you know, I think would work at that budget level. You know, for example, I'm getting ready to do a horror movie and it's called Craving. Uh, budget's right around, you know, 50, 60,000. And, you know, it's a it's a siege picture, it takes place mostly in one location. Um, it has some incredible creature effects. And right now, as far as independent films go, independent horror movies, creature stuff is doing really well. And if your creature is good, like it, it can do really well. Like let's let's just say, for example, the movie kind of turned out mediocre, but those monster things are all really good. Like that movie can still like, you know, make that budget back and then some based off the monster. It's almost like what name talent was to, you know, horror movies five years ago. You know, the monster becomes the name, you know. So if you think that a movie is over 50,000, then you realize I may have to take a producer's money and I don't want to add that stress I don't want to have to, I mean, that's a lot of stress on someone's shoulders to be accountable for that. Yeah. So, so the 50,000 is a safe place for you because you know, you can do that on your own. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and also just to start thinking about it on a, on a back end way. And you'll hear a lot of filmmakers say, Hey, if you don't get paid up front, you're not going to get paid. And, you know, maybe if you're a DP or director for hire, that's true. But as an entrepreneurial producer, you're making every, your back end is everything. You know, so if I make if I have a fifty thousand dollar movie and say a producer comes to me tomorrow and they want to put in fifty thousand, so now it's a hundred thousand dollar movie, how much back end do I have to give to that producer? You know, at, they're putting in fifty percent of the budget, so let's just say for the sake of argument, you're going to have to give them you know half of the back end, you know, fifty percent. And how much more is that movie actually going to make in the market at a hundred thousand as opposed to fifty? Is it enough that that 50% is worth it? Because I make my living off of my back end. So if I'm losing half of my back end, is the movie going to make more than 50% higher? You got to have you got to think about stuff like that, you know. And, and in this particular case, like unless you know, I guess I guess maybe at 50, maybe maybe if I put in like a like a, a bigger name actor, like if I put 25 of it and hired like Tony Todd or something like that maybe that would help it, but I, I, I honestly don't know. Um, you know, I have a friend who just did a, did a horror movie a couple of years ago and had some two like pretty good, like, you know, like upper level, like B actors should have, like, the movie should have done gangbusters and it didn't, you know? So 50 is just, I, I think 50 is a safer bet. Right. And are these usually films that are shot in one location? No. Um, Although, like, so I did one called The Other Side um, back in 2014, and it had like maybe 12 locations, but like we shot a good chunk of it in this compound 
where you know it was like this person they had a house and they had a garage and they had like an office and you know we we made like six locations out of that one you know and as far as like on independent stuff people say this all the time like you know make it a one location shoot you know like that's that's the way to save all your budget it's only going to save so much because a, a shoot day is a shoot day like a shoot day costs a production what a shoot day costs a production Yes, you're going to lose some time if you're constantly company moving, but you know, on an indie, on average, you know, you're spending I don't know five or six thousand a day. So, as long as your company moves are, you know, uh, structured to where you know you're on one location for that whole day, and then maybe another location for another three days, and then one day at another location, but you're not doing like midday company moves. It, it's it, you're not going to save a ton of money on the single location, a little bit, but not not a ton. Like you might on a six day shoot, you might you might lose a half a day in the company moves that split across six days. So like it's it's really not that much that much of a save. And for the fifty thousand dollar budget, are you typically the editor? Yes, yes. And the reason being, I, I'm not one of those people that, like I have to edit everything, but you know I've been editing now for 20 years, and you know at fifty thousand dollars, you know you're going to be able to pay an editor, you know, like five or six, you know, maybe ten thousand tops, like, and I don't feel like I'm going to find an editor for ten thousand dollars or five thousand dollars that's as good as me. Not to be egocentric about it, but I, I, it's totally a practical decision. If I, you know, if I had another twenty five thousand dollars to, you know, pay a full post team, I would, but I don't, so I do it. Can we break down this fifty thousand dollar budget? Sure. And help us understand, like, where are you spending that money? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I'll do like a kind of a generic, like, like breakdown of a fifty thousand dollar movie. So well, I'll talk a little bit about craving because I'm just doing that now. So, um, oh gosh, it's hard without it in front of me. But um, so, yeah, probably about on craving, ten thousand um, went for a location uh, right off, right off the bat. We needed uh, like a warehouse space, uh, two to three thousand square feet, and we have to build a set. So you know we're gonna spend um, I can't say exactly how much on the rental and then five thousand on the uh, the building of the the bar set which is the main location and then um, there's some money in lodging because uh, it looks like we're gonna shoot in Palmdale so I'm gonna have to put people up there. Uh, and this, so, so this is all in California. So yeah, this one's gonna be in California. So we're spending ten k on the location. Um, we're spending it's a it's a bigger cast than I typically work with. I think we're I think we're 10 or 12 uh, like major roles in it. And so we're spending about $12,000 on cast and that's not including name talent. You yeah. include the three name actors and that's closer to 20. And then um, we're spending we're we we're spending 5,000 on effects materials. And we've already, I'm not counting this as part of the 50, but we'd already spent almost uh, 10,000 on monster materials uh, prior to the crowdfunder. Um, and then, but we'll just, we'll just say the, the five. And so that puts us at like what, 35. And then we're spending about, let's see, three, 300 a day, 300 a day on catering and another 200 a day on crafty. Um, and then the rest of it's all in crew and on crew on like on indies now I you know I start my base pay at 200 a day nothing under or I'm sorry 211 a day it's like uh, California I think like minimum wage in 12 hours and ends up at 211 but then key positions get a little bit more so like the DP might make 350 or 400 or sound might make more but for the most part right around that 211 mark and we'll do this with a It'll skeleton crew, you know, it'll be it'll be a DP. She'll be she'll be running her own camera, including focus. Um, there'll be a, a secondary camera, and when the secondary camera is not in operation, that person's also like the the swing. So they're operator slash swing, and then uh, the third person's like the gaffer. 
And then, um, and then there's a, uh, a DIT that's also our script supervisor <laughs> and, you know, stuff like that, you know, um, they'll, they'll be makeup, um, but it'll be one person hair and makeup. And then our effects guy who does some makeup as well will augment some of that. And tell me again, I'm sorry, how long a shoot is this? So this one is 10 days, I believe. I'm still kind of scheduling it out. The The bar, which is the bulk of it, is gonna be six days. And then um, the exteriors, and there's a few uh, other locations, like three or four days. And this food that you're getting, it's from a restaurant or these are caterers coming? No, so like in this case, I'm I'm very lucky with this and the fact that my, my niece is a professional caterer. Um, she lives in Indiana and my, my, she's gonna, she's doing this one as a favor. So I'm basically flying her out oh, and nice. then like at, at $300 a day, she could make, she could feed a 20 person crew, cast and crew, uh, two meals for like 200 a day. Like she's really like, you know, we, we were the kind of poor that, you know, we would spend $20 and, you know, a family of five would eat for a week. Yeah. <laughs> and where is she making the food? Oh, uh, she'll do it here. So like, like she'll fly out um, like our kitchen in Canoga Park or um, we're also, if we're shooting in Palmdale, um, you know, we're gonna rent Airbnb. So we might have an Airbnb that's set up for the cooking. And then, you know, we'll have the stuff moved into the set, which is like 10 minutes away. So post, it, you're basically spending almost nothing? On almost it? nothing. Okay. So what I, like on documentaries, I spend, I literally spend nothing. I, I do it all. Like I'm not an expert colorist, but I can, I can do it well enough. Uh, I'm real. I'm pretty darn good with sound design and mix. The only thing I can't really do myself is like fi a good 5.1, but I know several people to where I can get it done very affordably. So like on, on this movie, like, you know, I want it to be, it's a little bit higher profile than a lot of the docs that I do. So I will most likely hire a colorist and a, a sound mixer. And that money has not yet been raised. So like, you know, like I had the crowdfunding consultant for this and he said, you know, after you shoot the movie, you know, no sooner than June, we'll do a post production crowdfunder for it. And he said we could expect, you know, uh, between 20 and 30% of what we raised before for post. So we were looking at maybe 15 or 20,000. And not to jinx it, but let's suppose you're out there and you need to go a day over. Let's, I mean, it's yeah. Palmdale. Oh, totally, totally. There could be totally. a hailstorm, yeah, something could happen. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So is there money in reserves or, you know, I can pull from here my own sources? Yes. Okay. So the, there's not, the, like the way a lot of indies work is like you, I don't have an official contingency in the budget, but I have money from, you know, an outside source that I can go to if something like that were to happen. You know, or even, you know, going a little bit deeper into my own pockets if I have to. But so you're yeah. prepared, a backup, I, yeah, so I'm prepared. rainy day fund, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. So to speak. Okay, that's good.